January of last year to January of this year increased their revenues by 287.7% on an annual basis. So monthly revenues have gone up and have nearly tripled on our average client because when you have the data at your fingertips and you're using it properly, you can grow dramatically. So what I'm going to do now is I'll actually go through and show you a bunch of charts and a bunch of metrics that I want you to be looking at so you can grow your business. Now, there are certain metrics that are just going to give you an indication of where you are and there's other metrics that will give you more insights and more action-oriented metrics. So you'll, you'll, see, you'll, you'll see them pretty clear. So the first metric, obviously, I like to look at is total sales. So we can look at, okay, right now our sales are this. And I don't care what your sales are right now. I don't care if your sales are $258,000. I don't care if they're $25. I don't care if they're $20, $258 million. Regardless of what, what the, the scope is or scale is right now, what's important is that, A, you know what your sales are, and B, it's very important to know, is that up or down versus last month? Is that up or down versus last year? You need to know what direction you're heading. And that's very important. It's the perspective to know, are we getting better or are we getting worse? If we're getting better, that's great. Let's do more of what's working. If we're doing worse, you need to know about that, know about it so you can correct it. Likewise, have a monthly projection to understand, hey, what are we on track to do? This is just to give you a sense of, how are sales doing? Likewise, I like to look at sales by day. Now, very yeah. interestingly, as, as Devin mentioned, you know, we've been yeah. working together and we built the dashboard for one, two, three employee. So what do we need to look at you know, for a more of a subscription business? For a subscription business, you're going to have lumpy daily demand. We need to really look at sales by month and look at how many, you know, what is their membership, what is the monthly residual revenue uh, from our, you know, our, our members. What is our churn rate? How many people are leaving, et cetera? These are the core metrics that you need to understand how well the business is running. Now, certain yeah. things you can look at, for example, sales by yeah. product, and then sometimes something will jump out at you and say, hey, wow, this product is not performing. You need that. If you use an software or e-commerce system, a lot of times it's not easy to tell which product is performing and which one's not performing. And so that's why you need to understand, okay, hey, wow, Product B has been getting you know bigger and better. We're selling more of that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? So that's why you need to manage your metrics and know what's going on. Very importantly, is a chart like this, and this is actually a, a real chart for one of my businesses on sales by affiliates. So if you do a sort here and you say, "Hey, I want to look at my my affiliate sales last 365 days." Obviously, I I, I blank that or top affiliate chart. This affiliate 15 has given us you know eighty six thousand dollars in the last year. 26,000 in the last 90 days, they've only given us $100 in sales in the last 30 days. So what does this tell me? Right away, I would have never known that, that this affiliate is not performing. Now that I know this, I know, wow, let's contact that affiliate. Let's get that, that affiliate to promote us again. Let's get them back to doing you know, close to you know, $8,000 a month, and that will increase our revenue by $8,000. That's a phone call that I will make that will make me $8,000. That will take me 10 minutes to make $8,000. And I would have, would have known about it had I not been tracking sales by affiliate and sales by individual affiliate. And so that's why we like, I like having charts for each you know, is it sales by affiliate, is it sales by vendor, is it sales by product, is it sales by region. When you have charts and you're tracking this, the things pop out at you right away and say, wow, this once again, this was doing really well, and it stopped working. And basically, the best strategy in business is to figure out what's working and do more of it. And that's why managing your metrics are critical so you can do that with your business and dramatically increase your sales. So that's, that, that's, that's revenue. Next thing I like to track is leads. And a lot of, a lot of businesses, you know, lead could be how many number of phone calls, could be how many people walk into a store, could be how many opt-ins, give them your email address. So I like to look at leads uh, on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Now, leads are a what we call a leading indicator. So let's say you have a you know one month sales cycle, meaning that the average lead that comes in today buys from you next month. It's a leading indicator because if sales go down this month, I mean, if leads go down this month, it means that sales will go down next month. And that's why you know you need to know about that right away. If sales drop, I mean, if leads drop, leads go down, 
then sales next week or next month are going to go down. And that, this happens all the time with business owners. They say, you know, they look at it, it's, you know, February, you know, it's, it's two weeks from now, it's February 21st or, or even later, and they say, okay, sales for the month are really dead. Why is that? And they start looking back and they go, wow, leads dropped three weeks ago. And they don't know about it. When you know, when you track things on a daily basis, you see right away, wow, leads dropped dramatically, and you know about it essentially in real time and can fix the problem. Conversely, once again, most business owners go, oh, sales were so bad this month. Why? And then they go back and figure out, oh, it was a lead problem. They should have known about three weeks prior, and they basically can't fix the problem until three weeks later, and they lose tens of thousands of dollars because of that. So I like to track, you need to track your leads on a daily basis, weekly basis, and monthly basis, and very importantly, what is the conversion rate? What is the conversion rate from lead to sale? Once again, what we're looking at here is we want to see trends. So basically, we see in this dashboard here, we're seeing that the lead conversion rate over the last four weeks has consistently gone down. As a business owner, what should I do with my time? I have a thought, you know, Gavin mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we're all entrepreneurs, we'll have a hundred things going on, we're all multitasking, you know, what should I focus on my business? Should I focus on getting more leads? Should I focus on customer service? No, right here is a gaping problem. My conversion rate on leads went down from 53% down to 34%. If I fix this problem now that I know about it by improving my conversion rate, my profits will double, if not triple, overnight. So now the, the beauty of the dashboard is it shows you, once again, very clearly things like, wow, my lead to sale conversion rate went down. Here are some things I can do I can do with that. I can improve my emails, I can call my prospects, I can improve my sales script. There's a whole bunch of things you can do, but you don't even know to do those things until you know there's a problem. Now, conversely, if I saw that on a monthly basis or weekly basis, my conversion rate was getting better and better, whatever I'm doing is working. I don't have to worry about it. And that's why you need to track your leads and conversions. So that's the lifeblood of your business. That's you know getting leads and getting sales are the lifeblood. Next thing I like to track, which, you, which is huge, is your advertising, and particularly online advertising. We talked about, the down in this intro, talked about the cost of acquiring a customer, and um, I'm sorry, I saw a note here, and I uh, don't know what that means. So, um, David, did you, did you say, I got a, a, a message, of my apologies, from the organizer. Is there something you want to know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I was um, I was kind of interjecting because I had a, a couple of questions here and there. And I, are you on speakerphone right now? I am. Yeah, so what happens is I think you can't hear me while you're speaking. So oh, that's cool. Um, no, I just I was curious, and and we're kind of back going back backwards for a second. But on the projections number, how does Guiding Metrics come up with that? Is it a, I presume it's a percent a percentage of prior month sale? Um, this this projection right here. Uh, the projection that was actually yeah exactly yep. Sure. So there, there there's there's a few different ways to do this. Now the easiest way is a linear way. So in this example, it's actually a linear way. So if we did two hundred fifty eight thousand seven thirty. And we divide that by six days, because right now it is the 6th of February. So if I did 258,730 divided by 6, that means we're, we're averaging $43,000 per day. If I do that $43,000 per day multiplied by you know, 28 days in February, we're on track to $1.336 million. So that's a linear projection. Okay. We can get more complex, for example, if we are, if we are a... Uh, residual business where we know that the, the clients we got you know on uh, January 10th they're going to pay us again on February 10th we could base the projection on um, you know future revenue from new clients and revenue we know coming in from past clients likewise we can get even more complex and base it on leads we can say figure out that on average over the last 90 days you know 11.3 percent of leads become clients in the same month, and then we can say, "Wow, well, we've gotten you know 427 leads so far. That's going to translate into 50 new clients later this month." So there's multiple ways to figure out the projection. So we just figure it out with whatever calculation best suits each business. Got it. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Sure. Anything else right now, Devin, or we're good? Nope, I'm good right now. And I'll I'll try to pause a little more throughout in case you, yeah. you uh, want to interject. And in my apologies. It's all good. You have no worries. 
<laughs> Great. So we went through leads. And now advertising, you know, the big issue I see with advertising is that uh, I'm seeing a lot of times that companies are wasting money on advertising because they're advertising on campaigns that, that aren't profitable. And more so, I'm seeing the issue that entrepreneurs and business owners don't understand exactly how profitable advertising is. And as a result, they're massively under-advertising and they can make so much more money with their advertising if they manage it properly. So I'll show you some basic advertising charts. I'll start with actually a very basic Facebook ad chart, the very bottom of this page here. This shows us our cost per conversion. So a conversion is basically when somebody takes the action you want. So basically, for example, we have an ad that says, hey, sign up for our, you know, our webinar, double your profits with a dashboard. And we know that you know, we spend, on average, a dollar per click. One out of 10 people sign up for the webinar. And that way, that way we know it's an average of approximately $10 per conversion. On a daily basis, we will always see fluctuations. No business, regardless of the scope of the business, scale of the business, is, always, is, is going to see a flat line for cost conversion. There's always going to be daily cost per, you know, fluctuations, good days and bad days. What we care about is, you know, what are the what are what are the long term trends? So, for example, on a weekly basis, you know, in December twenty first, it was cost us six dollars and forty five cents to get a conversion, to get a lead, or to get a sale, and we see that steadily creeping up. So, what was costing us six dollars and forty five cents is now costing us almost three dollars more per lead per conversion. Now, here's the problem. Problem A is that most entrepreneurs have no idea because a lot of entrepreneurs outsource their advertising to a firm. And everyone I talk to says, oh, my firm is awesome. My firm is, is unbelievable. They're so good. They were recommended. They're doing such a great job. And then the second they have a dashboard showing them what's going on, they realize, oh, my firm's actually not so good. Hmm. Because my firm is actually not a, they're, they're playing with my money, and they're basically going to waste a lot. They don't really, do they care that much whether it is, you know, 681 or 645 per lead? To them, it doesn't really matter that much. To you, it matters a lot. Because if they get that cost down, if they're able to really scale it down and on a monthly basis keep driving that cost down, so you know it used to be you know eighteen dollars and get down to eight, your sales and profits will skyrocket. So you need to understand your cost per conversion. Now, very importantly, you know if you're doing any sort of or e-commerce, we can figure out you know your revenue per lead. What I want to do is a chart like this that shows me on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and this is a Google AdWords chart. This shows me my cost per sale versus my revenue per sale. So this is actually an actual chart for my growth in business right now. That's the first time I'm looking at this chart today. So we sell uh, a business plan template. Uh, we sell for $97 and we have a bunch of upsells. So today, as of literally right this second, it's costing us $111 on Google to make a sale and we're generating $227 in revenue per sale. I'm making over $100 per sale. Now that's not always the case. As you can see, on certain days, like this day here and these two days here, um, my, I actually lost money on my advertising. So what we do is, and this is a, a, trip, a trip that I'd love everyone to use, and we do it for all our clients, basically my AdWords guy gets this chart emailed to him every day, as do I. He knows that when red is above green, that he lost money for the company that day, and he knows he better log into the Google AdWords account and mess around with it. Because advertising accounts don't just run themselves. You've got to go in there and delete keywords, lower bids, et cetera. So basically, the best way to manage your advertising is to have someone tracking this, get, you know, have a desk for doing it, daily email alerts with what's going on, or weekly email alerts, and make sure that the, cost, the red is going down. Your cost per transaction has to be going down. And when you're doing any sort of commerce type business, the goal is to spread between green and red has to, has to be uh, widened. You want a big gap between what it costs you per lead and what your revenue is. And once you can get that gap big, you want to scale it and scale it as much as you possibly can to dramatically grow the effectiveness of your ads. And when you do this, your sales and profits go up dramatically because you know which ads are working, you know which ad campaigns are working, you know which ones are losing money so you can stop them and you can really ramp up the ones that are working and dramatically, dramatically grow your business. That is, a, that is really huge, Dave. That, especially for us, like where we are right now is we do have, uh, we do outsource our traffic management, but we just brought a person 
on a, a new marketing person in-house to kind of ride those guys because we know that there's so much slippage. And then the next phase of that will be just bringing the whole thing in-house. So to be able to get those daily reports will save us a ton of money and make us a heck of a lot more. It's huge. Exactly. And, and it's also, it's, it's a very good... It's a very good productivity tool, a dashboard, because it holds people accountable. Even even if if the person in charge of your advertising thinks that you're looking at the results, and even if you're not, they're going to do a better job because now the results are quantified. The results, you know, on December seventh, the results were this. It is what it is. It cost them two hundred thirteen dollars per transaction. There's no change that you basically assign a numeric you know result to them, and now they're held accountable for the results and it forces them to do a better job. Innately, we people want to do well. That's why, you know, in sports it's so easy. You know, you you play a game of golf and you know your round of golf, you know what your score is. In business it's hard. You know, the person managing customer service and advertising, it's hard to get results. A dashboard allows them to do that and gives visibility so that they do a better job. So the next area that I like to look at in a dashboard in a business is your website. You know, Virtually all businesses have websites that they rely on these days. And I want to understand how well your website is doing and how it can be better. Now, usually I start with revenue. And a lot of times, uh, you know, companies say, well, I don't do e-commerce. It does, you know, I can't look at revenue for my, for my website. In most businesses, you still can figure out the effectiveness of your website. For example, it's very easy through Google Analytics to assign values when somebody fills out a form. You can even have a, a, a set up your, your, your 800 numbers or phone numbers on your website so that when somebody calls that phone number, we basically assign a value to it. So basically, any website, a consultant from any type of business, we could say, okay, it's, when somebody fills out our contact form, it's worth X dollars. When somebody calls us, it's worth Y dollars. And actually figure out how many of those phone calls and how many of those forms came from either paid traffic or organic traffic to your website. Now you know if your website is converting. And I go around and talk to business owners and say, well, how many leads came from your organic website last month? And I get blank stares. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the fact is that you need to, you know, it's the old Peter Drucker quote that, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Improve it. And it's, you know, you need to measure the key things in your business. And anything that is measured and watched improves. So if you say, hey, you know, last month we got, you know, 26 people filling out our contact form, if you focus on it, you'll drive that number way up. So I like to look at some sort of revenue from your website traffic. It could be, once again, it could be e-commerce sales, but it could also be, you know, form completions, phone calls, etc. I like to look at revenue by month. I like to do, look at visitors. I like to start doing calculations like revenue per visitor. Now this is an actual stat in one of my businesses. A year ago, we were generating 50 cents per visitor. Now we're generating $1.27 per visitor. I would like anyone to volunteer to compete with me in this business. <laughs> you can't. So mm -hmm. all of my competitors are making 60 cents, between 50 and 60 cents per visitor. So what does that mean? If my competitors are generating 60 cents per visitor, they can spend, if they want to break even, they can spend 60 cents on their Google ads, on their Facebook ads. They can spend, they spend 60 cents per click, they make nothing. I spend 70 cents per click, I make $1.27. I make 57 cents per click. I'm the number one advertiser. They can't compete with me. And as you probably know, the number one advertiser gets 10 times as many clicks on Google as the number three advertiser, and particularly even more so on the right side. So now I'm getting the vast majority of the traffic. I'm making 57 cents per, per click, and they can't make any money. And really, he who or she who gets the highest revenue per visitor wins the game. And the only way to do this is exactly what I talked about before, tracking your numbers, tracking your advertising, and then start looking at your, your web pages. You know, are, are they numerous returning visitors? Where's our traffic coming from? You know, which one, what's converting? You know, mobile establishment. And start looking at, at page views, bounce rates. Now that you know, you start looking at, we do this on a page-by-page -page basis. What is the conversion rate per page? What is the bounce rate? Bounce rate means the percentage of people that leave you know, once they come into that page and they leave that page before going to another page. If we know that our bounce rate, you know, is going up, we need to, we know, hey, let's fix that page. Once you have all these metrics and you improve your pages and the bounce rate used to be, you know, 
and now it's down to 47 percent, uh, you just got, you know, 9 percent more people to stay and convert, you know, you dominate your market. And you, once again, you can't do this unless you know the metrics. So it's really straightforward. Just know your metrics and now you know what to improve. Now once again, if my bounce rate is low and it's getting lower, I don't have to worry about that. You know, I want to worry about other things, but this is how you grow a business. It's like, it's blocking and tackling. You know, if you look at any, you know, great football team, the quality of players are mostly the same. It's the, the football coach teaching blocking and tackling. And in business, it's the same thing. The blocking and tackling is getting your metrics and looking at them and saying, okay, this is fine. Next, I don't have to worry about it. This is fine. Next, oh wow, this is a problem here. Let's focus on that. And that's what it's all about. But if you can drive, if you have the highest revenue per visitor on your website, in your industry, game over, done, go take a vacation, you won the game, you will dramatically grow your business. But if you don't, if you're not tracking these things, you'll never get it. <laughs> Email. Um, Dad, it's okay with you. I'm actually gonna I want to pull over your, your dashboard. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine, no problem. So I'm gonna pull over this is actually a piece here of the one, two, three employee dashboard. And um, obviously I can't show you everything. I just have a couple of tabs. Yeah, I'm going to show you the email, the email tab um, of this dashboard, and you know there's, there's a whole lot more to it. But what we can see here is we can look at every email that Davin sent out and what the open rate was, and click through it. So here he sent you a, a lot of you guys have probably been on his email list for quite some time. So this email he sent on he sent you on January 19th. The subject line was tons of leads um, sent out to this segment of, of his list. He got you know eight percent open rate. That was his highest open rate you know year to date. You know, so what does that mean? What does that mean versus if we go down and find another email that got a two percent or three percent open rate or a low click through? This is what what this means is that Davin can figure out his email formula, and the email formula is this: is, is what resonates with you. When I say you, it's everyone. Or what resonates with your audience? So. A lot of you have probably heard of Jay Abraham. He's a great marketing guru, um, marketing consultant, and he has the greatest line for marketing that I ever heard. And Jay Abraham said this, your customers are geniuses. They know exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. Your customers are geniuses. They know exactly what they want. And the way I take that for email is that when I send out an email, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but my customers are geniuses. They know what they want. If the email subject line is resonates with them, they'll open it. If the, if the link in the email resonates with them, they'll click on it. So the email formula is basically you sending out emails and tracking it and knowing, wow, this email got a 21% open rate. Wow, that you know, work with me one-on-one -on -one to grow your business. That resonates with my audience. So what should you do? Hey, send more emails like that. Conversely, you know, I look at an email that got, you know, if I go look at some order signs, I look at an email that got a, you know, a, a 9% unsubscribe rate, hey, let's not send that email again. My business, my business growth thing, I send an email out called Liar, L-I-A-R, exclamation point, at the subject line. Got the highest open rate that I've ever sent out in an email. Also got triple the unsubscribe rate I've ever sent out. Because people, obviously, when they saw the email, some of them liar, like it, it, they took notice of it and they opened it. When they saw the body and they didn't like what I wrote in it, a lot of people unsubscribed. And so once you figure out your email formula, you can make so much more money. Likewise, what we can do is group your order responders here. So, you know, Davin sent out a lot, and what you can sends out a lot of order responders. We can look at here, you know, this crowd of people begging to buy from you was sent out 217 times last month. Okay, now it was sent out probably you know, 217 times last month. If we divide that by you know, 30 days, it was probably it was sent out about, about seven times per day. So what we can do in the dashboard is actually add up all those emails that were sent out all those seven per days. We looked at this email here, 27% open rate. That's astronomical. You know, 58 out of 270 people that sent that, that received that email, opened up that, that email, and 16% of them clicked on it. So what's the answer there? That's a great order responder. Send more like it. Conversely, let's look at the order responders that got a very low open rate. You know, a, you know, we sent out a lot of them and we got much lower open rates. Let's not send those emails again. This email here, you know, make more money with membership sites. 
only got an 8% open rate, only got a 3% collecting rate. You know, those are not the emails we want to send. So once you start doing this, and so once you start tracking your emails and you understand, and I'll go back to my sample dashboard, once you go back, um, once you start tracking everything in your email and you start looking at, you know, the subject line, the opens, the click, the click rate, unsubscribes, and even possibly things like revenue or, or, or some sort of revenue indicator, now you know which emails work, which emails don't work, and you can improve your email formula. And you should be able within 30, 60, or 90 days to at least double your email revenue. Now the question then becomes, well, what is your email revenue to start with? That's another thing you obviously have to track. You know, what is your email monthly email revenue? Is it, you know, eleven thousand? Is it twenty thousand? But basically, once you start tracking your your emails and and you'll, you'll dramatically improve it and start sending out more emails that work. And then one piece of advice, and I mentioned it before, if something works, do it again. You know, this email that I sent out on June 29th that with the subject line, "Are you listening?" That email may, may generate forty three hundred eighty five thousand revenue. I'm going to send that same email out the next week or the next month. I'm going to send that again a month later, again a month later. I'm going to keep sending out that email until the conversion rate goes down. And I've had emails that I've sent out that have made six, seven thousand dollars the first time, and over a year that same email I just keep sending it or variations of it to make a hundred thousand dollars on one email that I keep sending out on an offer that was created years ago. So that's how you generate a whole lot more revenue and sales and profits from email by simply tracking it and knowing what's going on. Next thing I want to talk about is social media. So the key with me with social media is I want to make sure you're getting benefit from it. I think too many, too many entrepreneurs out there either don't invest in social media or they invest in social media, they spend a lot of time and energy on it, and they have no idea what their returns are. And I'm all about, obviously, about metrics and knowing if it's working or not. So the first thing you can do, very, very simply, straight from Google Analytics, is how much traffic has gone to your website from Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, LinkedIn, etc. And if you're doing a lot on YouTube or Facebook and you're basically getting you know, 80 visitors a month or you know 12 visitors a month, it's probably not worth it. It's probably not worth the effort doing it until you can drive traffic. Or you know, what you're doing is not resonating, it's not working, do a better job. Likewise, if you have tracking set up, you can look at how much revenue is coming in from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube to make sure it's worth the effort. I also like to look at things like you know, likes and likes versus unlikes, and this is a critical thing, classic thing that I keep mentioning. Do more of what works and less of what doesn't work. So what did I do this day that got me 35 likes? Well, whatever I did, do it again. That's why measure, monitoring your metrics is so good at that, is figuring out what worked. You know, a lot of times you send out an email, and maybe right away, you know, hey, sales spike, but you forget about that a week later, or same with Facebook. What works, do it again. And the old story, it's one of my favorite business stories, about the, the woman whose husband died. He basically was, they were both in their, in their 70s, he ran a very successful engineering firm doing $10 million a year in revenue. And basically, unfortunately, the, the, the husband died who ran the company. And a month later, the woman came in after, after grieving for a month, and she met with the head managers of the, managers of the company. And she said, what I'd like to do, for you to do for me, so I'd like for you on this whiteboard, on the left side, I want you to write down the three things that work the best over the last 90 days. And then on the right side, I want you to write down the three things that were or police or did not work in the last 90 days. And so they, the managers of the company wrote down on the left the three things that worked the best and the three things on the right that worked least. And the woman looked at the, the charts and she said, okay, here's what I want you to do. The three things that worked the least, stop doing them. The three things that worked the best, do more of them. And the company grew from $10 million to $100 million. And that's really how business operates. You know, figure out what's working, and do more of it, figure out what's not working, and either fix it or stop doing it. And that's what the dashboard and tracking metrics allows you to do automatically, very easily, because once again, things stand right out. What did I do here? Let's do more of it. Cool. And um, also, Dave, we're starting to get a lot of questions coming in. I can see uh, Michael Baker and Rick and Adam and Kevin. So uh, everyone, just go ahead and keep sending in your questions, and we will make sure that we answer every question before we wrap up the webinar. Cool, Dave?
very, very close. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to go through the last couple tabs quickly, and I see the questions going in, so I'll definitely leave time sure. to go through the questions. Okay, great. Thank you. The last couple I'm just going to go through relatively briefly. This one is customer service. This is another great example of productivity. So refunds. I used to have my, my customer service manager, I used to have no visibility into refunds in, in my business growth thing. And what we did is we had the uh, we had my customer service manager, she started getting these charts of refunds by day, by month, and this chart right here, which basically shows here are my refunds month to date and how that compares to last month. Green is good, red is bad. And what I noticed is the, the second I started showing my customer service manager these stats, every single month we saw green. We saw refunds going down because finally my customer service manager was being monitored and measured on a numeric basis. Before that, I had no idea whether she was doing a good job or a bad job. Now I was able to see, hey, if refunds are down, you are doing a good job. Refunds have gone down. I basically made an extra $10,000 per month on refund declines. That's straight bottom line. You know, $10,000 a month off of refunds means $10,000 a month in profits, and that dramatically improved the profitability of the business. Likewise, the customer service, I look at things like billing failures. If you have a residual business, how many people's credit cards fail? A critical, critical metric that you need to track so that you, once again, if, if you lose $8 a month on credit card failures, I don't care. If you lose eight dollars, you know, ten months ago, then it went to eighty dollars, then eight hundred, then eight thousand. I care about it, and so you know, once it becomes a, you know, it's a problem or it's turning to a problem, then you start focusing on building failures. How do you improve building failures? If you think about it, you'll figure out ways. For example, when somebody's credit card fails, you can automatically send them a text message saying, "Hey, your credit card just failed. Call me, and I'll get a new comp number." That will probably you know, right away get thirty percent to forty percent automatically call you and get a new credit card. So. There's so many things you can do if you just track them and know about it. Uh, likewise, if you want to improve customer service, use a ticketing system. You know, I want to know, you know, hey, this ticket has been updated in, in 33 days. As a business owner, you're not going to have visibility to that, so let's put it in, in a dashboard. So you can look at all of your tickets and all your customer service metrics in one place. Likewise, you know, refunds by product, you know, you can see things right away. Why is this product getting a lot of refunds? You need to know about these things so you can grow your business. The last tab here I want to mention is sales team. If you operate a sales team, if you have a dashboard, you can dramatically grow sales. And here, here, here's how. You can basically show each sales rep and show how many leads, their connection rate, how many were qualified, how many proposals, how many sales, proposal close ratio, and total sales and sales per lead. This shows you how every salesperson is doing. Now you can see, hey, Robin, if I give Robin a lead, she, on average, makes $1,590 per lead. Conversely, you know, Liz only does $280 a lead. So who are you going to get rid of and who are you going to keep? It's very obvious here. Likewise, well, why is Liz doing a poor job? The reason why, hey, she's connecting with leads. That's not the problem. Her problem is proposal close ratio. She doesn't issue enough proposals and she doesn't close enough. So how do you prove that? You prove that, figure out who has the highest close ratio. Robin has a 75% close ratio. Nick has a 70% close ratio. Let's pair Nick with Liz and improve her performance. So this is a great way. This is how you manage a sales team and dramatically improve results by monitoring it. Last thing I want to show you before I get to some questions is the most important metric that I like to look at is actually called contribution margin. And it's this metric right here. Contribution margin is an accounting metric. And what a contribution margin, the formula is, revenue or sales minus your variable costs. So for example, your your contribution margin could be your sales minus your cost of goods sold, which could be if you're a service company, you know, your staffing, if you're a product company, your your cost of manufacturing costs for you know cost of goods sold of those items, minus your Facebook ad costs, minus your Google ad costs, minus your refunds, minus your sales commissions, minus your affiliate commissions, etc. This tells you how your business is really performing in real time. So for example, you know, someone says, hey, my sales are up. Everything's great. But how about if you're selling the wrong product? How about if you're selling it, um, but you know, most of your sales are coming from affiliates that you're giving high commissions to? That's why you need to know your commission, mar commission uh, contribution margin in real time. In this case, my contribution margin is down 11%. Well, 
well, why is that? And that's why we do we build dashboards that are color coded. You know, customers aren't down eleven percent. Hey, what's the culprit? Sales are up. That's not the culprit. AdWords costs are down. That's not the culprit. Email revenue is good. Here's the culprit right here. You know, non-paid traffic's not performing. The refunds are good. So basically, what I like to do after we build a full dashboard is actually give you a chart like this. It shows you every aspect of your business. Now you know at a literally 30, 60 second glance, you know what's working, what's not working, how to grow your business. So that's why we like building dashboards and giving the metrics so that you can grow and fix every aspect of your business. And once again, the goal is within 12 months at, a, at an absolute minimum, if not sooner, you know, I want to see triple your sales minimum because if you're looking at the data and, and leveraging it, it's very, very easy to do to dominate your market. So, Gavin, it's okay with you. I'll, I'll, I'll start going through some of the questions. Is that fair enough? Yeah, and I have a question for you, too. So in this scenario, your non-paid traffic, your organic traffic wasn't really performing. So at that point, what would you do? Just uh, update your creatives? Well, if my organic... I'd update my content. If my organic traffic's not performing, that's when I start going, okay, let's go to my organic... Let's, let's go to my organic stats and figure out, well, what is the problem? You know, am I not getting enough traffic? You know, or, you know, it's organic. If I'm not getting enough traffic, and if my, let's say my, you know, my visitors are down, well, what, now I start digging into why my visitors are down. I start looking at, well, where's my refer referring traffic coming from? You know, hey, this site here that used to give me a lot of traffic is giving me a lot less traffic now, so I'll contact that site owner. owner. Or maybe it's an, an SEO decline, and hey, I used to invest, you know, X dollars per month in SEO, and now I stopped doing that seven months ago. Maybe I should start investing in SEO again. Or maybe the culprit is that if I start looking at um, you know, mobile tablet traffic, hey, my mobile tablet used to be 7% has jumped up, and wow, you know, my, my traffic's not converting mobile so much, maybe I should better mobile optimize my website. Uh, or once again, it could be bounce rate. So basically, the first step is to identify that a problem exists. And now we know that a problem exists in the website, now we need to figure out what is the culprit. Is it the bounce rate? Hey, are, is it pages per visit? And now once you figure out the, cul the culprit, now we can fix that culprit. Now if our page views are going down, now we start looking at our web page and go, oh, hey, maybe we should have, you know, better links. You know, we should have better link between our, our pages. Maybe we should have clearer calls to action, et cetera. So now we, we basically figure out the big problem, figure out the culprit, and then start fixing the culprit. I like it. Great. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to start going through some of the questions that were that were typed in, and we'll go through those one by one, and I'll try to make them as, as relevant to everyone as possible. So, um, can I turn a single paper transaction for multiple clients, or does the dashboard restrict us back to only a single user? If I have 40 clients, 40 plus clients, I'm doing this simultaneously, is there a solution for uh, independent reports that I brought my clients. Uh, the short answer is uh, yes. We can do this for each and every client. Um, what I'm going to do at the end of um, the webinar today is I do have a link and I'll show it right now. Um, not that I want to um, distract people. Basically, we put together a package that guidingmetrics.com forward slash 123 employee. We put together a package, we being David and myself, because we built the dashboard for 123 employee. We start thinking about you know, what, are, what are the core pieces that would really help all of you. We put together a dashboard package, once again, at guidingmetrics.com forward slash 123 employee. And basically the package includes all of the revenue dashboard that I showed you, all of your website analytics, all of your social media that I went through, all of your email marketing, all of the customer service, all of the advertising and all the leads and conversion funnels. So basically everything I went through in the dashboard, I know I, I, I went quick, quickly through some of the things. Basically, put, if you have the entire dashboard built for you, we basically, uh, the normal price of this dashboard is a $999 set of fee and $499 a month. Gavin asked me, and I, I, I agreed to see that we're waiving the set of fee, so the zero set of fee. I lowered the monthly fee to just $399 a month. So basically, you can order the dashboard here 
for just $399 a month, or if you'd like to save two months, you can do the annual plan at $39.90 a year. So basically, once again, at guidingmetrics.com forward slash one, two, three employee, we have the monthly version. It's just $399 a month, no set of fees, no long term. You can cancel at any time. It puts the onus on us to make sure that you're getting massive ROI on this. Once again, for four dollars a month, three ninety nine a month, you know, I'd be surprised if within two months you're not generating at least, you know, five, ten thousand dollars more a month in additional sales that you generate. Uh, so here's the pricing plan. Now, the reason why I mention this now is because this this question from Michael, if you wanted to do um, 40 clients, unfortunately, um, that would be outside the scope of this because basically we, we have to integrate with 40 different AdWords accounts. There would be a slight premium. If you want to go ahead and sign up, uh, we can do that. And we'll have basically anyone that signs up, they're going to get a, a free one-on-one -on -one call with me. I will basically do a call with you to actually go through your business and figure out what the top metrics are for your business. And if for some reason you have a, I know a lot of questions, hey, do you connect with this? If for some reason we didn't connect with it because we can have pretty much anything, I would just refund your money. No big deal. In your case, Michael, I would say, hey, we can connect with the 40 accounts. We're just going to be an extra X dollars per month. Uh, if for some reason you don't want that, I would just refund the money. So if you're interested, go ahead and sign up. I understand that people will have you know, questions. Hey, my, everyone always feels their business is different because, yes, your business is always unique. So basically, you sign up. You're going to get the first thing you do is schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me. We'll go through it. We'll hammer out all the details. Once again, if for some reason, it, you know, you said, hey, it's not for me, I'll just refund the money. Uh, no harm, no foul. So that's the answer to Michael's question. A question from, from, from Rick. Great question. What is the complexity of setting up this type of metrics? The beauty is that let's say you're using Infusionsoft for, for your CRM and shopping cart, and you're using Google AdWords, and you're using Facebook ads, and you're using Google Analytics. The grand set of time uh, on your on your end is nine minutes. Literally, it takes about nine minutes for you to go into Infusionsoft, generate an API key, give us that, uh, give it, add us as a user to your Google Analytics account, add us as a user to your AdWords account, add us as a user to your Facebook account. Literally, it takes you know somewhere between you know 90 seconds and 120 seconds for, for each what I call data source to add us as a user. So literally in nine, ten minutes, that's all you need to do, and then we do all the work. We pride ourselves in building complete dashboards within 30 days. So basically within 30 days, your full dashboard is done in once again nine, ten minutes of work. Now what we it's more time than that because A, I want you to do at least a 30-minute call with me where we figure out what are the most important metrics. I'll give you some ideas to grow your business. And then B, once we build the dashboard, uh, we're gonna want to do some calls to you to say, okay, let's go through the dashboard. Let's go through what everything means. Let's talk about some additional charts that we want to add, and let's maybe we'll get some rid of some charts. Because basically, since we've built built hundreds of dashboards for very very successful companies, we already know what metrics you should be tracking. The second you say, "Hey, I'm a this business," I'm going to know what metrics you should be tracking. Because we've worked with some of the biggest and the best companies that gave you know I'm not a genius. I basically work with some genius companies that said, "Hey, Dave." We, you know, we, we track this, we'd like to track this, and I say, hey, that's a great idea, and now we track that for all of our clients. So basically, the complexity of setting up is next to nothing on your end. My team does all of the heavy lifting, all the complexities on my end. Um, a question from Adam, uh, looks killer, can I get a link to check it out? Um, the link here is, um, I will email that, uh, I don't know if I know how to email it to everybody. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know how to do that. Um, Davin, it's sort of yours can email out the link to guidingmetricsforge.com for us one, two, three, employees to everybody. That would be great. Uh, I don't, I don't have the ability to do that. Okay. Uh, Kevin, question. I get leads used weekly from various sources but no inquiries. How do you fix this? Oh, inquiries. So leads, um, leads a week from various sources, but no inquiries. I'm assuming, well, inquiries, I'm assuming inquiries could be a contact form. If it's a contact form, 
uh, that's pretty easy to, to do. You can basically a couple things you can do. One is that you can use like a a, a Zapier uh, API connection. It's the easy thing that we can do. So basically, every time you get a a an email alert that somebody filled out a form, we can basically have that populate in the dashboard. Um, if it's a phone inquiry, that's slightly more complex. Um, the best way to do a phone uh, phone tracking is a your phone system might have an API. Things like Ring Central uh, have have APIs that we pull phone calls. Or another way to do it is um, Google has a very cool service um, that I think the first phone number may be free. That if basically somebody calls a phone number, they'll give you an 800 number, and if somebody calls that number, um, it'll then forward to your number, uh, to your phone number uh, automatically, and then through Google Analytics we can track how many phone calls. So that's how we track. Uh, things like like inquiries uh, into a dashboard if it's a phone or a contact form. Now, usually a contact form, if you're using a CRM like an Infusionsoft, the contact inquiry will go into the CRM and will pull from the CRM. Okay. Um, this is Justin from Rick. Uh, analyzing what it measures all found in one place. That's a key thing. Because we're getting all the data in, in one place to you, saving you time. Allowing you to see what's working, what's not working, so you grow your sales. Um, what if you have several related businesses? Can you use one dashboard for all of them? Yeah. So what we like to do is in either we set up um, different tabs for different businesses, or a lot of clients will have a, a drop down. So here, like this drop down here, you know, daily, weekly, monthly. Sometimes if you have different businesses, we'll have a drop down either at the chart level or for the entire page. We'll have a drop down, you know, company one, company two, company three. We do this all the time for websites in particular. So maybe one business with four websites. So we'll basically have a drop down at the top of the page, you know, website one, website two, and you click between you click drop down two, and all the data will update for that website. So yeah, we can basically include multiple businesses um, in your dashboard, and you basically have to figure out. It, it comes down to what is best for you to view the data. We could either have a this tab right here is you know only for business one, this one's only for business two, or we can combine them and, and or we can completely separate them and have sort of a quick view tab that has the highlights. Here's the highlights of all three businesses and here's a combination. Here's business one plus business two plus business three. You know, we basically figure out with you what is the best way to look at it and grow your business. That's that's I'm the business of optimizing businesses. The dashboard is a great tool and an essential tool to do that, but the process is how do we optimize your business? How do we figure out how to look at your three businesses or two or five businesses in the best way to to grow them? That's the name of the game here. Question from Mark here. <laughs> Can we sell this dash and service to our clients as a resource that we offer? And all great questions. So we cannot white label our dashboard. There's too much complexity in how we do it and how we build it because everything's custom done. What we can do. So when I say there's no white labeling, you know the URL at the top of the page here is always going to be dashboard.guidemetrics.com, and at the very bottom of the page, it's always going to say powered by guiding metrics. The logo on top could always be your client's logo, it could be your logo, or it could be a combination uh, of your logo and their logo. So what we do with what we call our white label partners is we basically ha give them one dashboard and it's their logo on the dashboard. And then each of their clients have a tab. So we can basically set up user permission so that when you log in, you see everything. And you can set it up that when your, let's say your ad guy logs in or she logs in, she only sees the advertising tab, but you can see your profits and everything. So we set it up that, so basically you can set up that with different user permissions. When we have multiple clients of yours, we can set it up that you, you know, this is client one, this is client two, this is client three, and we basically do, okay, your logo's here, Client one logs in, they only see this, and instead of saying big ads here, it's client one's logo. When you log in, you can click between tabs and see all your clients. When they log in, they can only see their account. That's how we do it. So basically, we could offer it, you basically, basically can resell to your clients and, and mark it up if you want. But once again, it, it, it's going to be 
sort of quote Randy between, hey, listen, your logo is going to be here. Hey, this is this is the dashboard. We work. You would say, hey, we work with guiding metrics because you know we're not the business of creating dashboards. We're in the business of growing your company. We're great at advertising. We're great at conversion models. Whatever you're great at, that's what you're great at. We work with guiding metrics. They're they're the best at at making sure we get the right metrics and actually do all the calculations for you. And that's why we use them. So basically, you know, we would work together with you in order to do that. Okay. Let's see. So I'm slow. I'm um I uh, I tore the ligament in my right hand um, skiing about a month ago, and so I'm in a cast. So for me to scroll through the questions, I'm a little slow from doing it lefty, which is uh, not a treat. Okay. Question from Constance. I've used lead tracking before which has had an email notification. The emails work, but the tracking on the dashboard always included zero, zero opens, clicks, et cetera. How do I know this won't happen with this? Um, it basically has to do with, with the email tracking. If it happens with this, we refund your money. Um, it shouldn't happen with this because we, we need to know what email system you're using. So basically, at the top of all these tabs, I always list some systems. So for email, we work with Infusionsoft and Aweber and all these systems. We've worked with tons more. These are just the more common ones. So we need to figure out what system you're working with, and we need to figure out, okay, you know, why things are, cert are, are, are tracking a certain way. Now, for example, certain email systems don't work well with um, click tracking. So what we would do there is we would say, okay, your, your system's not working well with, with click tracking, so why don't you do this? Why don't you use the Google URL builder? So I don't want to get too technical here, but the Google URL builder allows you to create links very, very easily such that all the links, if somebody clicks, clicks it, it's trackable. So what we would then do is tr from, from Google Analytics, we would pull your clicks per email. So basically the point is there's always workarounds. We've, we've been doing this for over, you know, over two years. We've basically worked with so many clients. We've, we've, if there's a problem, we've encountered it before. We bang our heads against the wall. We figure out a solution. So that's how, you know, there's, there's never is it, you know, not ever, but there's always cases where we build a chart and it doesn't work quite right the first time. But one thing, we figured out all the so-called hacks to make it work, all the workarounds to get the data in there. And once again, like I, I mentioned earlier, a, a workaround could be a, a Zapier plug so that if you get an email alert, a copy gets sent to the dashboard. <laughs> Likewise, you know, if you use QuickBooks, if you're use, using QuickBooks online, We'll connect with the API and pull your QuickBooks down. If you use QuickBooks, QuickBooks Desktop, we can set up and get auto, you basically can set up automated email alerts that every day your QuickBooks automatically r runs a report and sends us an email with that report in our dashboard notes to open that email and put the results into your dashboard. So we figure out um, you know workarounds for everything. Um, yeah, Rick said you know step time is really really quick, so we will get you set up you know very very quickly within 30 days. Um, cool here, uh, Pano, my apologies if, if I mispronounce your name, but just curious, don't you measure customer value and repurchase frequency? Yes, yes we do measure customer value and repurchase frequent, frequency. The, the issue, some of these metrics that we, we track, I don't put them in the standard dashboard because what happens a lot is we entrepreneurs a lot of times get, get, tend to get to tie into things that if it doesn't relate to my business, I tune up, tune out. So you know, we purchase frequency. If if you have a business that uh, you know clients purchase from you once and never again, I start showing that chart, and all those people you know tune out. But yeah, I mean, basically that's why I said the first step of the dashboard is doing that thirty to sixty minute call with me, where we say, okay, what do we need to measure? Okay, yeah, we need customer value. Yeah, we need repurchase frequency. So it differs for everyone's business. So I listed once again. I, I list. On, on here, some of the you know I list some of the more you know common metrics we'll do. But once again, in your business, you know it may be we don't need to look at this. So we refer to websites. We, we're going to add different metrics. So this is just a guideline with with regards to the types of charts that we're going to create for you. Once again, it, it, it's customized uh, in doing that. And that's why we generally uh, generally always have at least this nine hundred ninety nine dollar thousand dollar setup fee. Because there's a cost for us to go through that and fully customize it for you uh, based on your systems and your needs. And that's why, once again, you know, Dan asked us to waive it, so we're waiving here. But yeah, it's going to be customized. And that's a great question, Pano. You know, 
if your business requires, if we purchase frequency and customer, lifetime customer value are key stats, yeah, we're going to measure those. And we're going to make sure that you're looking at those. And if that number is going down, you know, you need to know about that. You need to fix that. And if you want, we're not going to be nice about it. I'm not nice about if your you know, customer value is going down, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, because that means that you've got a problem in your business, you've got a pain, and you're going to cancel your business, and you need to solve it. And that's what this is all about. It's not color coding things. It's showing that those red arrows, you know, that we, the red arrow face, face, uh, facing down, that shows you that something's not working. It's supposed to not look good. It's supposed to get you angry so that you fix the problem and grow your business. So that's, what, that's what it's all about. Um, Mark, how much would you bill us to onboard our clients in an agency dashboard? Um, another, another good question. Basically, with an, an agency dashboard, generally it's a, um, a template, meaning, hey, if you're a you know, Facebook ad agency, every one of your clients is going to have a you know, Facebook ad chart. It's going to look sort of the same. Um, if, you're, if you're a full, you know, so it, it's basically the onboarding would be next to nothing. If it is your, your clients and you're doing a whole, you're basically running their entire show. So we have some clients that they basically do all the online marketing for their clients. And it, in those cases, it's sort of a, a completely new dashboard per client. Then it's a bigger deal. So, um, so you know, once again, for Mark, I, I, I can't give you a clean answer. We probably, it probably requires us to do a 15-minute a um, conversation. Uh, my email address is dave at guidingmetrics.com. If you uh, have any questions, uh, send me an email, dave at guidingmetrics.com. If you do me a favor, um, in the subject line, if you can just put Davin sent me or one, two, three employees sent me, um, that way I'll, I'll prioritize. After this call, I'll set up an email filter. I have lots of email filters. I'll just set up an email filter that if it says, and I'm writing a note down, the email has Davin or one, two, three employee in the um, subject line, it'll go to a folder, one of my folders that I check uh, frequently versus one of the folders that I check uh, once a day or once, once a week. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please put Davin sent me or one, two, three employees sent me as this, in the subject line. Send me an email at dave at guidingmetrics.com and I will um, answer that as well. Um, back to questions here. Uh, do you have SMS S alerts? We don't have SMS alerts. We don't have any uh, text alerts. We basically do, we can do daily emails. And the reason why we don't, one reason we set up that we don't have SMS alerts is, and, and, and more frequent than daily email alerts is because it happened all the time that for like a, a, a Google AdWords chart that the cost per conversion was $800. Because basically you spent $800 and you only got one conversion so you had a bad beginning of a day at you know at 8 a.m. and your 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 cost conversion is 800 dollars and then by noon you got 11 more conversions and it went from 800 down to you know 70 dollars. The, the problem is that when you have a small sample size, crazy things can happen. That's why we don't have SMS alerts because you know it, it could be a very small sample size. So unfortunately, that's not something that we have built in at the moment. We are looking at that in the product roadmap for certain circumstances, but as of today. We don't have SML support on the dashboard. Um, that, Davin, I believe answers all the questions. Um, I don't know if anyone else had any additional questions that they want to type in, et cetera. Yeah, awesome. And uh, I was thinking, you know, the SMS versus email, not a big deal because, uh, you know, everybody gets uh, email on their phone today anyway. So, and of course, you could program the emails from guiding metrics uh, to, you know, send a certain ping or sound when it comes through. So, probably not a big deal at all. Um, all right, cool. So, once again, if you want to work with Dave, if you want to use guiding metrics, which is what we've done, we've adopted it in our business. And it is, honestly, I, I, the fact that that your average client increases their sales by 300% is incredible. I would have to think if that's the case, we should be able to increase ours by 600% because I don't think we're your average client, although we, we, to a certain degree we, we probably are. So very exciting. I mean, think about what kind of ROI you could have if you tripled your business in 12 months. You know, I meet entrepreneurs all day long that are on the growth track and they're increasing their, their business by 20% per year. 
300% would, would change the face of your business and change your life. And that's really incredible. And it's such an elegant tool to do that. And it's so much fun to be able to see all your metrics and be able to make little tweaks in your business every single day. It's just unbelievable. So if you want to take advantage of this very generous deal that, that you created, Dave, which I think is fantastic. I asked you to create a special deal. I didn't think it was going to be this good. So um, you want to go to guidingmetrics.com forward slash one, two, three employee. That's guidingmetrics.com forward slash one, two, three employee. And I just have to tell you all, we paid a heck of a lot more than this. So I'll have to talk to you more about that, uh, Dave, offline. But uh, if you go to uh, guidingmetrics.com forward slash one, two, three employee, if you feel that for some reason, you know, you're, you're interested in this, but maybe it's not quite a match or, or whatever uh, tools you're using are not going to interface with the platform, I guarantee that's not the case. But if, if that's your concern, go ahead and order it. That will get you on the phone with Dave and his team. If for some reason it's not a match, they're happy to refund you. They're very casual about that. It's no big deal at all. And uh, I absolutely encourage you to make the investment and, and do guiding metrics because it is a massive game changer. It's been a huge game changer for us. Dave, I want to thank you for opening up my eyes. Once again, take advantage of that. Go to guidingmetrics.com forward slash 123 employee. I don't see any more questions coming in, so I think we'll go ahead and wrap it. Dave, I know how incredibly busy you are. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Those of you that are on the webinar, I realize that time is the one precious commodity we cannot buy. So the fact that you took the time to be with us, I hope that you found this incredibly valuable for you. I won't ask for your time unless I'm going to give you value, so I'm sure you did. This has been one of my favorite webinars. Dave, thanks again. Thanks for being with us. Um, thanks so much for having me. And I want to reiterate what you just said. Thank you so much to everybody for planning and taking valuable time out of your day, and I hope that uh, this opened up your eyes into what your business could become and how you could really dramatically grow your business once you start tracking your metrics and, and leveraging the results to really, really grow your sales and profits. Awesome. All right, everyone. Well, this is uh, Davin Michaels with uh, Dave Lubinsky from Guiding Metrics, and I want to thank you for being with us. I hope you get involved. Uh, it'll change things for you in a dramatic way. And until next time, this is Davin Michaels. Live your true life adventure. Bye for now.